Okay, welcome to the channel, and uh, today we're just looking at removing a cylinder from uh, this Grumman um, Traveler here. Uh, it's got a number of issues that are uh, proving difficult, so we're going to go ahead and, and remove it. It's failed a compression test, it's had a good look with a bore scope, and there's a few concerns there, plus the engine sat for a long period of time, so we also want to check out the condition of the camshaft. So obviously cowls have been removed. Um, to give us access, we've removed the baffle around the engine um, for cooling. The exhaust has been removed, so pretty much just standard, you know, hand tools needed there. Phillips screwdriver, uh, ratchet. A uh, real great one, though, is the, is the flex sockets here, especially for the exhaust and for the intakes. Um, the engine's been positioned so that this cylinder is in the uh, top dead center position. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and remove the intake. Uh, the primer line, the oil return line, and uh, we'll get the rocker cover off and then and then get the um, actual cylinder itself pulled. Now this one's very tight. It's not normally this tight. Removing a cylinder from an aircraft engine is a very intrusive procedure and if done incorrectly can cause massive engine damage or failure. The decision to remove it needs to be educated and based on compression tests, bore scope inspection, oil analysis, and filter inspection. There may be regulation requirements that necessitate the removal of a cylinder, but it shouldn't be done lightly. Boy, that's a bit dried out. Okay, we got that off there. And everything's loose here. We want to get our inner cylinder baffle out. We may have to take off this next one here, and we've got to pull the top part here. Normally you can just grab these and give them a bit of a pull up and a shunt back. Sometimes they're a little more stubborn than others. There we are. Now that'll let that baffle fall down. That gives us access to all of our base nuts. So as we can see that's loose but still being held up tight there. So we'll go ahead and remove uh, this one as well. That should just give us enough space to get that wiggled out. That just pops that down. Boy, that is still really stuck. Okay, now we can remove the uh, rocker box now that we've got the uh, Inner cylinder baffles off, and with it at top dead center, we'll be able to remove the rocker shaft and the rocker arms. That'll let us take the push rods out, and we want to make sure that we keep them um, in order. Although I will be checking uh, when I put it back together what the dry tabbit clearance is, because as I've said in the past, I quite often find that that is wrong. And uh, and so we will check that ourselves here as well. You normally get a little oil out when you pull these off, so you might want to have something to catch it. This one hasn't run in a while, so that was pretty dry. Okay, so here's our, our rocker shafts, push rods. This is what holds the thing in. And uh, our valves here as well. We've got intake and exhaust and uh, those are pretty pretty dry <laughs> at the moment and and we should be able to push that rocker shaft out okay we're gonna have another go at getting these out before i take it off because it is the way you're meant to do it and i did spray it with some lube oh yeah it's not too bad okay perfect Remember, we got to keep those organized. It seems every time you try and do something on camera, it fights you 15 times more than normal. Okay, now we can take this off. That'll let the tubes come through, which is a bit more advantageous. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now with that off, the uh, pushrod tubes housings are no longer held. And well, everything on this engine seems to be very stuck. They should now pull out. It's gonna be a miracle if I can do that without smashing my knuckles. <laughs> a little bit of assistance. I'm very careful not to damage them it's very lightly. And that one is really tight. I'm I'm just tapping this very very lightly. so I don't mar anything. I have never had to do this. There we go, well, that was stubborn. Okay, but now that allows those out, which then gives us excellent access to the base nuts. For this 0 through 20 Lycoming, we're gonna need a, a 9 16 and a 3 quarter inch um, cylinder base wrench. No specific pattern or technique for removing the cylinder base nuts, but certainly a correct sequence for tightening and the uh, torque values as well as the lubricant required on the threads when reinstalling the cylinder. As always, check the overhaul manual and other appropriate documents. Someone seems to be having a little bit more fun than we are playing in the hangar. Okay, then once I've got this last one out, I'll be able to just pull the cylinder, the whole cylinder straight back, and we want to catch the um, catch the piston uh, and not let it fall down and, and hit the case with the connecting rod. So that's all clear now. So we're ready to go ahead and, and pull that back. A little bit of a wiggle. There it is. I'll pull the base gasket off. That can be useful for just holding things up. And then there we go. Now, yep, this piston pin is seriously stuck. So one or two things will help with that. Either uh, electric heat gun, and you really heat the piston up, get a little bit of lubricant in there to get them pushed out uh, if you need to. Um, and sometimes that's all you can do because of space that's available. Or this tool is pretty fantastic for, for pushing that piston pin out. The only problem is sometimes um, there isn't room. If you're not dismantling the complete engine, and if you imagine if this was a six cylinder and we were taking out the middle cylinder only, uh, that doesn't fit in. So an electric heat gun will work very well at times as well. Okay, we got this set up now, and this just nicely pushes that stuck piston pin through. The engine's really relatively new and in nice shape. You can sometimes push these out by hand, but there goes a piston pin cap, guess I could have caught that. And if you don't have one of these, as I said, you can get a bit of penetrating oil on it and then use an electric heat gun and uh, put some leather gloves on and just get that piston really nice and hot and then you'll be able to push it through with a little bit of uh, assistance. If they're really stuck, sometimes you'll need a, a brass drift, but you gotta be careful about how much force you're putting on things again, so, you know should never be hitting anything very hard in an airplane. It's a bit slow, but it gets the job done. Just gotta hold it up higher now so that the uh, piston pin can clear the other cylinder. We are almost there. Not very good, didn't even have the camera on a good angle there. Sorry about that.
So now we can have a good look at the camshaft in there, which actually looks to be in excellent condition. And we'll have a good poke around with the mirror, rotate the engine around and take a look at that as well. And look at the face of the uh, lifters as well. But actually I'm very happy with how that looks. So that's very positive. Okay, so these studs here, this one and this one are through studs. Uh, they go right through the engine to the cylinder on the other side. So if we have any length of period where we're going to have the um, cylinder off and uh, separated from the engine there. We want to put a few washers under here and put the base nuts back on and torque them back down um, so that the um, tension and everything is held properly on the bearings and uh, the cases are held together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, now we've got the cylinder on the table. Um, we'll go ahead and inspect the bore, inspect the valves. Um, I will likely, if we don't see anything bad at that point, do uh, the guide check for the exhaust valve, because these are high time cylinders, and just uh, have a good look through it all. So there you go. That's how you pull a cylinder off, and at a later date, we'll make one on, sticking one back on. Stay safe, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to subscribe and like, and uh, we'll talk to you all soon.